Hi guys, so um, we've got an APC Smart UPS 1500 here. Um, this is not so much a teardown as a teardown and potentially see if we can fix this thing. Um, we had a number of power outages the other day and for reasons Beth delved into with other YouTubers that have already been well covered, um, we lost a reasonable amount of equipment. We lost this, uh, we lost a jukebox, and we lost one of the sky receivers as well. So um, obviously something happened on the uh, tail end or start of those power cuts that uh, none of this equipment liked. So um, let me get you into position. This is going to be a difficult one because this is a big clunky unit. This is designed to be rack mounted. And uh, we'll see uh, what's going on in here and uh, get it sorted. Um, I know it's an absolute state. It actually lives in a really grot grotty space. And it wasn't new to us. It was uh, reconditioned already. So uh, God knows what we're going to find in here. Anyway, I'll be back shortly. and We'll get you uh, overhead and we'll uh, get into it. So first things first, we need to get this front off and get the battery out. Nice easy job on these. I've already had the battery retaining bar out. That's this thing here. And we want the battery out because this is a UPS and these have a habit of spontaneously becoming alive when you're working on them. Uh, I'll get rid of that. And I believe first things first with this is we need to take the back off. This doesn't actually feel like an APC unit, if I'm honest. It uh, doesn't feel quite chunky enough. So we've got six screws on the back, which will go everywhere. I know where that went, I saw it. There. It's much easier if you're not having to work with the camera. Oh, let's just get all of those out. I'll retrieve that other one in a minute. And that gets our bottom off. And now I need to stop you again so I can reposition everything. Isn't this fun? So I'll um, hopefully stay mostly out of shot. Once we've got this apart, I'll put you back overhead in your usual spot because we're not interested in all of this. Some of these screws are quite obviously broken. So we're not going into metal here. I have a horrible feeling this is a really nasty plastic chassis in here, if I remember correctly. Well, that screw's doing nothing. Really awkward angle to work at. Let's see if we can't get that one out. And then rather than just popping off as you'd expect, we slide backwards. Yep, plastic chassis. So that's a metal case for a plastic chassis. Lovely. Thank you, APC. And as you can see, there's not really anything of interest in there. So what we're interested in is down here and under here. So uh, I will stop you, get you in a better position, and then we'll start all over again. Right, let us see what we will see. So we've got what appears to be a communications board down here. Uh, is that really supposed to be in that way? I guess so. Um, I'm trying to work out how to get this bit of plastic off. And then the connector down here, which I'm just trying to the slide to come off, there we go. That is unbearable to do data. There we go, so transformer here, all your switching electronics here. Uh, one hopes, let's plug this back in, that we're only looking at a fuse or something similar. Get in there. This really does feel very, very cheaply built. This does not feel like the kind of quality I'm used to with APC gear. But then again, I suspect this might be more a sort of uh, small office home and I'm used to much bigger devices. So what have we got going on here? 
So along this back section, we've got a communications board. Uh, it says Fox Communication. It doesn't say who makes it. Um, we can't really move much around down here. So we've got our RS-232 serial port here. This is obviously APC's uh, weirdy wiring. We have provision for what looks like an Ethernet controller here and two Ethernet ports. So this one could, in theory, by the looks, have SNMP built into it. What a chip that is. Oh, we've got provision for a micro there as well. Uh, that comes across over to here. This is the power board. And looking down here, we've got a micro within the footprint of a dip, a uh, shrink dip as well. So, so that obviously allows for a different package or possibly that's a development board similar to the STM boards we use. So I want to look at where this goes. So we have a cutout there. I suppose the first thing we need to do is see what state that cutout's in, which would work a lot easier if I'd plug in multimeter. In. Can I get my meter somewhere you can see it? We have this big expanse of nothing over here, so we could use that possibly. Um, the video um, overlay board. Uh, continuity testing is not something I've gotten as far as yet. So there we go, that's on. We're on continuity. So what I'm going to do is go down here and have a quick look at this cutout. As you can hear that's fine and I want to make sure that our mains is actually getting over here. I should be able to get through there, yes it is. And it is our neutral getting over. Yes it is. Uh, we'll check the earth anyway but I don't know that there's an awful lot of point. Okay, so we're coming in, we're going through some suppression stuff. Uh, common mode choke, we've got some mobs down there. And I am not seeing fuses. Oh, there is a fuse down there. Let's have a look at that. Aha. Uh -huh. So whatever that fuse is, that looks like that's our problem. That's nice and easy. Just trying to think the best way of doing this. I think what we'll do is we'll switch over to volts here. We'll switch over to AC volts there. I have a spare power cable here. Because you do hear this click and do something, so it's not totally dead. So as I plug this in, you'll probably hear it click. There you go. So we're on AC volts, so let's go on to our neutral. We can find an easy place to get at that. I think it's there. Mm, not quite working the way I thought it would. Right, we got. So let's just make sure we have mains down here. We do. Do we have anything on the side of this fuse? Two hundred and thirty-seven. Zero. Right, we've got a fuse gone. That's. Uh, definite that's nice and easy that most likely has just been taken out by a surge so we'll get this out of the way you're not going to get to see me resurrect that because i don't think i have any of those fuses um so i need to order them so um yeah there's really not much to these so this consists of a inverter which you synchronize to the grid frequency and the idea being that you get a nice changeover when the power goes. Um, we've got lots of very high current switching over here. We have a transformer under here, which is used to charge the batteries when the UPS is running on mains, and it's used as the inverter transformer when the UPS is running on DC. Um, pretty much all your power switching is contained in here for that and then you've got a little bit of routing down here a low voltage transformer for all the digital stuff here uh, it's possible this transformer is used to charge the battery it depends on the EPS um, and then we've got a couple of surge arresters for um, 
phone and ethernet here there's not really much to it they are a really really good source of parts though um, you've got lots of big chunky switching you've got some lovely big caps down here um, that transformer can sometimes be reused all of this heavy through hole stuff can be reused um, if you're doing power electrics or switching then yeah the there's a great source of parts in here. So I'm going to stop you for a sec. I'm going to get the information from that fuse. I'm going to go see if I have a fuse or something we can make fit in there. If we have, I'll fit it. Otherwise, this is probably the end of the video. Back shortly. So as always with this kind of stuff, there's a uh, value judgment to be made here. I have more of these UPSs. Um, I'm sure it would make a lovely video to tear down and go into uh, much further detail in here. Um, but this is a fairly complicated switch mode setup down here by the looks. And the odds of actually successfully being able to troubleshoot that are not great. Um, if I were a betting man, then I would be looking, get my tweezers, to make sure we are, we are turned off but we're not unplugged. So yes, if I were a betting man, my money would be on those diodes down there. Um, to be honest, that's going to mean taking this entire board out. Uh, I'm really not seeing anything in there. I thought I did. more light no I'm actually using the camera now to uh, try and see what's going on in there but yeah I thought for a few seconds I saw something dodgy down here but there isn't anything so yeah this one is going to be destined for the scrap bin there's no point in putting the time and effort into it for what it's worth um, as I've said before, unfortunately, that's what it is with a lot of this stuff. It's a value judgment. No one is interested in sitting sitting there watching me repair a UPS. Um, it's going to cost me more time than uh, really I want to spare on it. And obviously, we've got things like uh, broken bits of plastic. And to be fair, it's such a cheap, nasty bit of kit. I really didn't realise just how cheap and horrible it is. And all of these are just about done for so yeah I think this one is uh, gonna go in the parts bin so what I'll do is I'll lift you up and we'll pull some bits out of it we might as well just strip it apart and uh, have a look see what we can uh, get out of it so let's take you back up everything's there so we're now not worried about separating things uh, I'm not overly worried about those caps so let's get in here um, Nastily, they have used the um, blade connectors on, sorry, blade and splay connectors on the earth that you actually have to squeeze in the tab to release the earth, which is really quite nasty because they've then put an insulating cover over it as well. So we've got to get the screwdriver in there, pull the tab in, and then pull. Uh, Where's my players? So we can just pull these off. And same with those. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. Where's my screwdriver gone? So same thing with that one. Screwdriver in, pull it across, and then lift the whole lot up. How are we doing? We've got a little two pin connector here for the fan, and that's it. So the back panel, you've got a fan, you've got a surge arrestor there for ethernet, 
another one there for the phone line, lots of earthing, your circuit breaker, your input and your output. Um, all of this stuff is potentially useful, main stuff is generally uh, handy. Uh, the fan might be useful but it's, I'm pretty sure that's something cheap and horrible. How is it retained? Plastic clips. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with that a bit later. All right, how's our power board held in? Um, not sure, you know. Oh, there's an earth clip to the bottom. So that's how the chassis is earthed through that. And you can't really see it, but they've actually painted over the countersink there, so I wouldn't bank on that actually really achieving anything earthwise. So here is our data board. Hopefully it'll focus. So say we've got space for what I suspect is a micro and an Ethernet controller there. So there's obviously a version of this which does have Ethernet. Uh, that is definitely Ethernet. Not so sure about the top, that might be comms. So we've got... Uh, that's 10 pin. I don't know what that would be. Are there 10 pin RJ45s? I've never seen one. We've got all sorts of comms isolation going on here. We've got the opto we've got opto isolators here which are um, protecting our serial lines. So my guess would be that all this micro and Ethernet chip do would be to provide an Ethernet version or a TCP IP version of that port. Uh, there's probably a few nice chips on there worth having off. That's gonna get old fast. So go so we have our battery connectors here and they're the same horrible tab type connectors I don't even recognize the uh, connector used there so in this is just cruel and unusual APC you know what we'll ignore those That's their transformer off next I guess Really sure what that transformer's doing because that's one way of doing it, I guess. Anyone tell me what that's doing because I've not seen one done this way before. I'm not taking any particular care over this before anyone knows screens. Oh, look, there we go, we're out, and then we have this. Silly little front panel board. Not using it again now. This is just a wonder of plastic engineering, this thing. So we've got a little, I'm off screen, I know, little tab there. I could have done that rather than cutting it. Boom! Right, this is going to be a couple of LEDs and a switch. Why? Let's say you've got. Why do that? You've got four LEDs and a switch and eight can. Oh, God knows. Let's zoom you down and let's have a look at this. I'm going to sit down now as well. I go have a drink. All right, so we can have a little bit more in-depth look at this now. I'm curious to know what micro we've got under here. That is a proper EEPROM label. We've got the backing on it.
Can't see which one, but that is an STM32 Micro. So my guess would be this is a development board that would normally sit on there. Uh, anything interesting there? Some 74 series chips. Uh, we've got three identical blocks for sensing there. Um, we have a linear regulator there. Uh, we have this here. So the other possibility is what we're doing is we're switching at much higher frequency than... Um, I wish I could get that one off as well. We might be switching at a much higher frequency than 60 hertz, and that's what this is here. Um, a lot of the cheap inverters that do modified or step sign um, work this way by producing a fairly chunky um, high voltage and then actually switching with switching devices rather than actually generating a 50 hertz uh, sine wave to start with. Uh, having a look on the back. So. This big switching transformer is feeding straight into these and I can't see anything to know what they are and helpfully they've also riveted everything together so I can't get in there to tell you. We have a 1G22SH there, not sure what that is, but it's switching some fairly hefty current. So let's go over to this section here, which is our, it does give all the appearances of being a switch mode power supply. And actually looking at this here, I wonder if that cap is uh, no longer with us. Oh, everything's getting in the way. We have a top 246YN in there. That is our switch mode controller. Those diodes all seem okay. So we tested these diodes here. Oh. So we've tested these diodes here, um, which really leaves this switching the switching device and switch mode controller IC, the big cap here, or this little one, which I'm guessing is going to be in the feedback circuit. And all of that circuitry drives this um, so this is a switch mode pacifier and I'm guessing it's for all our logic because nothing down here is particularly heavy duty we've got lots of current sensing resistors in here so we really are monitoring everything there's more there but yeah that that really is it I'm guessing that's probably going to be an STD bugging header there but yeah What have we got here? We've got lots of extra stuff here. So we've got another 10 pin RJ45 type thing here. We've got potentially another micro. Opto isolation. So we've got option for a different set of comms here. I have to say, I've said this already, this does not feel like an APC product. Um, secondary side, yep, yeah, that's good. That doesn't tell us anything. There is no sign. A brand, yep, there is. It's there. Right on that corner in there. APCC. So, yeah, anyway, that's what's in a UPS of that size. Um, annoyingly, this dial did work on the secondary side, but if you can't uh, charge it and provide it with mains, there's not a lot of use for it. I, mean, I guess there's a possibility you could use it as an inverter, but. There's better ways of doing that. Anyway, there you go. That's dead. Uh, not fixed, which is what I was aiming for. And uh, I'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye.